Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a, uh, another episode in the 30-day vi video challenge. This is the Flapping Crappie Channel. I'm Davis, and today we're talking about the best tips for catching fall crappie. As you can see right now, it's it's actually a bluebird sky day behind me, but I uh, I'm, I got to admit I, I was a little guilty. I slept in this morning. Uh, it was 39 degrees when I got up at 6 a.m. Yeah, 39. I know I know some of you down south are still saying it's still 90 degrees outside. I think I talked to a couple people from the Carolinas and they said it's almost 100. Yeah, 39 degrees this morning. Hello, Wisconsin. Hello, fallen Wisconsin. But I'm out right now. It's actually mid 40s, some wind, some chop. I'm gonna try to find some fish later on today. Actually, let's see if we can, there's some fish right there. There's some fish right there. Those are little guys, I'm not gonna worry about them. So the best five tips for finding fall crappie. The first tip, tip number one, look deep. So as the water temps cool during the fall and into the winter, these crappie are gonna set up on drop-offs near their wintering basins. A lot, what happens on a lot of natural lakes is during the wintering months, these crappie will suspend out over basins in 25, 30, 40 feet of water. Maybe if you're on a lake with a lot deeper water, they'll suspend out over that. They'll suspend 20, 25 feet down. Um, that's where they can find safety and the comfort of water temp that they need. But in the fall, they'll stack up right on the edge of these drop-offs. So on this lake that I'm on right now, and I've, I've talked about this before, the, the drop-off ledges are about 18 to 20 feet, somewhere in that range. The basins are 25 to 30 feet. So I'm trying to find those, those edges on this, on this body of water that I'm on, 18 to 20 feet, and I'm trying to find that hard bottom to soft bottom transition. So what happens in the fall, the shallow water, the let's say 10 feet or less, the weed growth in that, that shallow water begins to die. And when that happens, the bait fish, they don't have the forage anymore, to, to survive, there's no food for them, and they don't have the cover in the, anymore for protection. So what, what do all fish do when they don't have the cover and the forage? They move deep, and that's what the bait fish are doing. So the bait fish are the first ones to move out to these deeper ledges, these deeper drop-offs, and all the predator fish, crappie included, chase them out to these deeper drop-offs. Now that's why this is, the fall is probably one of the best times of year to go fishing in general, but specifically for crappie, because they're tightly packed up on these drop-offs. So in order to find these fish, I'm gonna troll along these drop-offs. I'm gonna to try to find the edge where it's a, a structural mix, right? So if I can find a mix of sand gravel to where it meets muck, mud, silt, some sort of hard bottom, soft bottom transition, that's the first thing I'm gonna look for on, on sonar, whether it's my 2D down imaging or side imaging sonar. Now, if I happen to find any type of cover, like deeper brush piles, uh, submerged docks or bridges, Maybe some rock pile, maybe some some rock piles or something like that. I'm not going to pass those up because that provides cover not only to crappie but to a lot of other species of fish. And if it just so happens that that type of cover falls right on the break line from where these crappie will go, will set up to suspend, that's even better. So on this map that you're looking at, you can see the break lines and these tighter contours. The tighter the contours, the sharper the break. I'm looking for these sharper break lines near a big flat, near a deep flat where water's, let's say, 20, 25, 30 feet or deeper if you're, lake fish, if you're fishing a deeper lake. I'm trying to troll those tighter contours because that is where the structure bottom is gonna be mixed from hard bottom to soft bottom, sand gravel to muck and, and mud or silt or something, some soft bottom. Now, once you find fish on these, on these ledges, you got a couple options. You can just stick to trolling that, that contour. Once you find, let's say it's 18 feet, that seems to be where the lake bottom or the river bottom transitions from sand to mud. You can keep trolling along that, that break line for the entire lake shore or you know, for as, as long as you want. Or what you can do is when you find the fish, you find the school of fish. Now they will move around. They're gonna to stick to that structure line or that, that contour line, but they'll move around. They might, you know, when you get on them right away and fish them, you might catch three or four fish and then they'll be 50 yards ahead of you or 50 yards behind you. But they're gonna to stick to that contour line. So what you can do, grab a couple buoys. When you first mark, when you start to mark the first school, throw the buoy out, keep going another 100 yards, maybe 200 yards. And when you find another school, throw a buoy out, and then just troll between the buoys back and forth. 
okay? This way, at least you'll have a, an idea of you're staying on the right course if you don't have a GPS and you can't see your, your contour marks or your tracking line of where you've already been. If you just got a sonar unit that doesn't have GPS, I'd use the buoys. Ideally, that's probably the best course of action for you. So that's tip number one. Tip number two, go big or go home. Do not be afraid to size up in lures. I know a lot of times during, during the August months, these crappie can be really finicky. Um, a lot of, sometimes I have to downsize in lures to get them to bite uh, because of the water temps are too warm. Water temps are cooling, oxygen levels are mixing. These crappie, among other species of fish, are turning on. Their metabolisms are kicking in, they're hungry, they're aggressive. Go ahead and size up with some bigger lures, some jigging wraps. I've done some multiple jigging wrap videos, lipless crankbaits, bigger jig heads, eighth ounce and quarter ounce jig heads, and go ahead and start using swim baits, these bigger swim bait patterns, these bigger plastics, two to three inch swim baits, ideal for this time of year. Do not be afraid to size up your lures. The other benefit of using these larger lures is if you've seen my sharpshooting video on crappie, I was using a jigging wrap, it was a two inch jigging wrap. When you use these larger lures, they actually show up a lot better than let's say a 16th or a 32nd ounce jig with a tube below your sonar. So this does a couple things. One, you can actually watch the fish. It's like playing video games. You can watch the fish come up from the bottom or come up from where it's suspended and attack your lure. Also, you can get an idea of what kind of cadence is going to trigger that strike for the crappie to come up and hit your lure. So even if you can't see it on your sonar, you have an idea, okay, I'm jigging it six inches. That seems to be the perfect amount. If I jig it a foot at a time, it's too aggressive. They're not even coming close to it. If I only jig it two inches, they don't find it aggressive enough. Find that right cadence. These bigger lures, you're gonna see them on the sonar and you're gonna be able to pick up exactly what you need to, or exactly, you're gonna be able to know exactly what to do to get crappie to strike. So tip number three is find the current breaks. Now, if you saw my uh, tournament video with SK Crappie Catching Adventures, Hook City and three pound crappie fishing, I fished a river system. And it took me a long time to find the brush piles on that river system. The brush piles, had I, had I actually sat down and thought about it, the brush piles were set up in the eddies of that current, or of that river. So what happens on river systems, there's a current break, and then there's the backwater eddy. And right on that seam, a lot of fish species will stack up because they can move out into the current and get whatever bait or food is flowing down that the current is bringing and move back into the eddy because it's a lot easier uh, to just stay in the water. They don't have to fight the current. They're not using, they're not burning up a lot of energy to stay in that current. A lot of times these brush piles or any type of, uh, any type of cover that, let's say it's just driftwood or something like that, will get pushed back into these eddies from the current. So if you're fishing around deeper points, um, maybe you got a bridge piling or something like that, pushing that current back, that's where a lot of cover, uh, rock piles, uh, brush will get stacked up and that's where these crappie are gonna sit. In that video, the brush piles were sitting right in the eddy break of that current. But in that video, if you noticed, the fish were moving, so you do have to cover some water on river system, okay? I didn't, for whatever reason, crappie on river systems, I don't know if it's because there's a lot of predator fish or they, they're just chasing bait fish all over the place. They move a lot more than on lakes. So you do have to move, but just stick to the current breaks, find those seams, and find the eddies. That's where cover's gonna be stacked up. Fish and river currents, that's tip number three. So number four, Take the kids out fishing. Fall fishing is arguably the best time of year to go out and fish uh, besides spring fishing. Spring fishing is, is probably number one uh, if you're fishing from shore. But you also have a chance to catch crappie from shore in the fall. And it's just a very specific location. If you can find deeper points where these crappie are gonna stack up right on the ledges, these deeper water drop-offs before they suspend into deeper water basins, maybe some bridge piling, some dams, any place where there's a little bit warmer water, that's where these crappie are gonna be and they're gonna concentrate there. So shore fishing is definitely doable this time of year if you can find deeper water points that are, that are within casting range of shore, maybe some deeper bridge pilings, some dock pilings, marinas, something like that. They're gonna be in deeper water, but they're gonna concentrate into that certain water column because they wanna find that perfect water temp that provides the food, there's bait fish there for them to feed on, and they're, they're comfortable just sitting there. They're not burning a whole lot of energy if the water's too cold, their metabolisms are kicking in right now. So 
that's tip number four. Take your kids out. It's a great time to go fishing. Slip bobber tactics are probably key. Slip bobbers and live minnows. I've done a, I've done a bunch of videos on slip bobbers and live minnows. I'm gonna link those. Everything will be linked below. Click on those and watch those. Slip bobbers and live minnows, that's ideal. Fishing these deeper drop-offs from shore. And tip number five, school is in session. Yes, these crappie, when they stack up on these deeper water ledges, or these deeper lake ledges and deeper river ledges, they are concentrated. They school up really, really tight. Now, two things to remember. Crappie tend to school with the same size class. So if you do find a, a group of crappie and they're eight, nine inches, it's probably not the school you want to chase. Go ahead and find another school. Bigger fish, school with bigger fish, smaller fish, school with smaller fish most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. Now the second thing is, again, I'm gonna stress this, hard bottom to soft bottom transition, the structure transitions, that's where they're sitting. A lot of times these smaller bait fish, these minnows, the shad, they're feeding on larva coming out of the muck. So they're gonna sit right on the edge of sand and gravel and muck and mud. So these, when this larva fall time in September, there's a, usually like a September hatch, at least in the Midwest. It's not as big as the May hatch, but there's a September hatch of flies. Sorry, the bait fish will be feeding on the larva. Crappie will be feeding on the bait fish. Throw some bait fish swim baits, some, some swim baits that look like bait fish. Throw some swim baits that look like bait fish, some jigging wraps, lipless crankbaits. You can even troll some bigger crankbaits. Mimic those bait fish patterns. Find the right color. You'll put some slabs in the boat. So those are my five tips for catching fall crappie. I hope you enjoy it. Be sure to like the video if you want to see more uh, best tactics for fishing crappie different times of year. Maybe some videos on the lures I find that work best for different types of conditions, different types of, or different, different times of year. And uh, comment below if you have any other tips that you want to give people for fishing for fall crappie, for finding fall crappie and fishing for fall crappie. Post that in the comment section below. I appreciate you watching as always. Uh, this has been great. This 30 day challenge has been great. We're kind of wrapping it up, coming to an end. I think, I don't know how many videos I have left, but thank you all so much. You've been great in the comment section. I, I honestly, I really appreciate it. So if you're new, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. You got to click that bell. You know, you want to click that bell. All right. I'm going to get out of here. I'm actually going to go start fishing, try to film a challenge video for you. So appreciate you watching as always. We'll see ya.